women typically run on a 24 to 35 day hormone cycle. So when we're talking about periods or PMS, that four to seven day time frame where menstruation typically occurs is just one phase in a month long cycle. Many of the changes that we notice throughout the month with our skin, our energy levels, our mood, and even the thoughts that we're thinking can be contributed to the fluctuating hormone levels that naturally occur in this month long cycle. Now, I wanna take a moment to say that I am a licensed counselor who primarily works with anxious women. I have a master's degree in clinical mental health counseling. I do not have a medical degree. I am sharing this information to the best of my research and understanding as it pertains to women's mental health. And I'm doing so because many of you have reached out to me and asked for this video. So I always encourage you to have conversations with your own healthcare team, whether that is a therapist, a physician, both, or even others, to have those conversations about the unique details of your own experience when it comes to mood and PMS and all of this super fun stuff that we deal with as women. Women go through four phases in a month long hormone cycle. We have menstruation, the follicular phase, ovulation, and then the luteal phase. The longest phases here are the follicular phase and the luteal phases. Each of these phases lasts for about two weeks. Menstruation happens at the beginning of the follicular phase, which is when the body is starting to prepare for a possible conception. And then ovulation happens pretty much in the middle of the follicular phase and the luteal phase. It kind of bridges that gap, if you will. And this is really just a three to five day time frame where conception could occur. All throughout these four phases, hormone levels are rising and falling to prepare the body for a possible pregnancy. And if pregnancy doesn't occur, then we menstruate and the cycle begins again. Let's take a look at how all of these hormones fluctuate throughout this month long cycle. I so hope that this chart just starts to normalize all of the different changes that are going on within a woman's body on any given day and how many changes are really occurring on a day-to-day -day basis throughout the month. With that normalization, maybe a little bit of grace can occur for either yourself or for the women in your life. Because truly, hormones are constantly rising and falling to support any possible pregnancies that might occur. As you can see with this chart, there are four main hormones that are kind of at play here, but for the purposes of this video and talking about our mood in particular, we're really just gonna be looking at estrogen and progesterone. Now, the primary function of progesterone is to support a possible pregnancy. However, this hormone also really impacts the quality of our sleep as well as our mood. Progesterone impacts the impact of a neurotransmitter known as GABA. GABA is kind of a calming neurotransmitter as it generally promotes feelings of relaxation and general well-being. Because of this relaxation aspect to GABA, the higher that GABA is, the calmer we feel, the less anxiety we feel, and the better we sleep. Now, on the other hand, when GABA is low, we tend to have a little bit more disrupted sleep and we can feel a bit more anxious as well. And not only does progesterone impact our mood, so does estrogen. Estrogen actually impacts the production of serotonin, which you might know as the happy chemical. The higher the estrogen, the happier we tend to feel. Estrogen is at its highest right around ovulation, which does tend to be when many of us feel our best, most confident, and have the most energy. Not only does progesterone start to fall off towards the end of the luteal phase, but so does estrogen. And this is the time frame where we typically notice PMS symptoms or we're not feeling the best, our sleep is disruptive, we start having more anxiety or depressed mood or even intrusive thoughts. So hormonally, this all is starting to kind of add up. So what's next then? How do we support ourselves and our health through an ever-changing hormone cycle? Well, firstly, beginning to track your cycle to really understand what symptoms are occurring, when are they occurring, and you can start to kind of pick up on patterns, not only of physical health symptoms, but also of our mood and how our thoughts are impacted too. Tracking these things and understanding those patterns is gonna be a huge help for supporting ourselves through this ever-changing cycle and kind of preparing ourselves for it as well. Once you've begun tracking, then starting to remember what we've gone over today can be a huge help too. Just knowing how our hormones are fluctuating and how these fluctuations can impact our mood, our energy, and the thoughts that we're having. This can really help to prepare us for whatever phase is to come and the challenges that might come along with it. 
For instance, since we know that progesterone and estrogen fall off right before menstruation begins, if we know when menstruation is roughly about to begin, we can kind of predict when we might start feeling a bit more anxious or when our sleep might be disrupted. So maybe we plan to practice some thought management strategies during this time, or we start to practice yoga or other calming types of practices to really help to support just our nervous system in this time and to manage our thoughts and our self-talk a little bit better. I will add some guided practices below just to help with, you know, those unhelpful thoughts that we don't necessarily want to be having or if our anxiety is a bit higher than we feel comfortable with, I'll add some practices below that can really be helpful here. And since we know that these hormones can be impacting our sleep as well and disrupted sleep is a common PMS symptom, then it might be beneficial to implement some calming strategies or get back into a bedtime routine, especially that week before menstruation is about to begin. There are additional methods outside of the counseling world that can be beneficial for dealing with PMS and all of the changes that come along with these changing hormone levels throughout the month. These are things like syncing our nutrition and our lifestyle choices with the various phases of our cycle. While I have learned a lot about this for myself, I do not consider myself to be an expert in this area, so I'm going to leave some resources down below that I have personally found very beneficial. If this video has been helpful for you guys, please let let me know by liking, sharing, and subscribing to my channel. This really does help so much. I'm so thankful for each and every one of you, and I will see you guys next time.